This is example 9.3. We will analyze the weld amplitude of a shaft carrying an unbalanced rotor. This is part of chapter 9 of a mechanical vibration textbook from Rao 6th edition. We have a shaft carrying a rotor of weight 100 pounds and the eccentricity is 0.1 inch. The eccentricity means that the center of mass of the rotor is 0.1 inches from the geometrical center of the rotor. It rotates at 1200 RPM and we like to determine the steady state wheel amplitude and the maximum wheel amplitude during the start off condition of the system. We will assume the stiffness of the shaft as 2 times 10 to the third pounds over inch and we will have an external damping ratio of 0.1. Let me write down that weight, 100 pounds. We have to divide the weight by gravity in order to get the mass. Remember that we are working in inches, so the gravity is 386.4 inches over second squared. And that gives me a mass of 0 0.2588 pounds second squared over inches. They tell us that the eccentricity, and I will call the eccentricity A, equals to 0 0.1 inches. We have an operating velocity of 1200 RPM, which is 1200 times 2 pi over 60. That gives me a operating velocity 125.66 radians over second. The stiffness of the system is given by the deflection of the shaft and the equivalent constant is given and is 2 times 10 to the third pounds over inch. And then we have a damping ratio of external damping, which is 0 0.1. With that, we can calculate the natural frequency, which is the square root of k over m, and that will be 2000 over 0 0.2588 and that gives me a natural frequency of 87.9 radians over second. With that omega n and the operating velocity of 1200 RPM, we can calculate r. And that is equal to 125.66 in radians over second divided by 87.9, also radians over second, and give me 1.43. I'm writing only two decimals, but please keep up all the decimals to do your calculation. Now, let's recall the equations of motion from the theory that we did in our narrated lecture. Let me recall those two figures that help us to get the equations of motion, and I will get an equation of motion for the x direction, which is m x2 dot plus cx dot plus k dot equals to ma omega squared cosine of omega t. And then one very similar for y direction, but is sine of omega t. And remember that I will use the response for an unbalanced system. And in this case, the mass of the unbalanced is the total mass of the rotor. Therefore, the response is a r squared m, which is the magnification factor, cosine of omega t minus a phase angle. And very similar for y, and in this case, is sine of omega t minus the same phase angle. If I take these two x and y, and by using Pythagoras, I can get the deflection of the chap, which I will call rho, I can say that rho is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that will give me a value for the deflection of the shaft of a r squared m, with m being the magnification factor equals to 1 over square root of 1 minus r squared, all that squared, plus 2 zeta r squared. Now, let's find the response for steady state condition. 
and the steady state condition meaning where the frequency of rotation is the operation frequency and we already got for that operation frequency that r is equals to 1.43 So for r equals 1.43, remember that I'm using all the decimals in my calculator, I save the value, it will, I will plug that in for r squared m. Let me plug in all these numbers. And remember that zeta is 0 0.1. And I get a value of 1.889 and I have to multiply that value by times a which is 0 0.1 to get the value for the deflection of the shaft that I call rho and that gives me a value of 0 0.189 inches so that will be the total deflection of the shaft in steady state condition Now let's do the same for the most critical condition. You recall that the, for the most critical condition, R is equals to 1 over square root of 1 minus 2 zeta square. If I plug in the values, I get that R critical is 1.0101. It's very close to resonance because we have very small value for damp, uh, for damping, right? For zeta, which is 0 0.1. But in any case, I will use this number. And when I plug in this number into my R squared M, val M value, right, M equation, all that square, that gives me a value for r squared times the magnification factor of 5.025, which gives me a deflection in the most critical condition of 0 0.503 inches. Just to compare, let me calculate the a response when we have resonance which is r equals to 1 then for r equals to 1 r squared times the magnification factor is 1 over 2 zeta and if I plug in the values I get that this is 5 therefore the amplitude is times 0 0.1, which is A, is 0 0.5 inches. So it's very similar to the most critical condition. Let me see this graphically. If we have the graph for R square M for zeta equals to 0 0.1, this is how it looked like I draw some la uh, vertical lines that represent R equals to 1, R equals to 1.01 no, which is the most critical condition and R at operation uh, frequency which is 1.43 so as you see the most critical condition is right here and that's where the maximum deflection of the shaft of course and that's usually the machine goes through that condition and then in the operation condition, the amplitude is much smaller.